Underwater, the coming of darkness is the stimulus for a total change. The creatures of the day seek hiding places, and the even stranger creatures of the darkness emerge from the silt of the ocean floor. Creatures that have evolved and adapted to survive and hunt in the blackness of underwater night. Hiding from daylight and emerging only when the last glimmer of light is gone. The sun sinks low over the horizon on the Lembe Strait in the Indonesian island chain, home to some of the richest and most bizarre marine life found anywhere in the oceans of this planet. Fishermen head out to their nighttime fishing grounds. Their families have fished these waters for generations, yet only a fraction of the life that thrives in these fertile seas is known to them. Much is too small or too secretive to be caught in their nets or on their hooks. The huge bumphead parrotfish leaves the safety of the daytime shoal to search the reef edge for a safe place to spend the night. Size brings security. Growing to over a meter in length, it can afford a relaxed search for a suitable resting place. The seabed comes alive as creatures of the night begin to stir. Keeping low over the sand, eels snake from their daytime burrows, slithering across the seabed in search of food. For the coral cat shark, the dominant sense is smell as it threads its way among the coral rubble. Picked out by the diver's lights, the pattern seems obvious, but during the day, when the shark rests, it blends into the debris perfectly. Its large eyes gather the remaining traces of light, alert for enemy and victim alike. Bright red might seem a positive drawback for the hunting animals, a dead giveaway, but in the darkness of the nocturnal sea, the opposite is the case. Marine animals see things differently from humans. Most are tuned into the blue end of the spectrum. Red simply disappears, rendering the fish invisible, the ultimate stealth weapon. But it is seldom totally dark, and those fish which use light for vision make the best of what little there is by grabbing as much as possible. So large eyes are essential. Some use a combination of strategies, large eyes so that they can detect their prey, the color red so that they themselves cannot be seen, and even specially adapted fins which help them to feel their way through the darkness. Very few animals are to be seen at both ends of the day. Most hide away. Life in the night sea is very different from that in the daylight. But day or night, the sea moth relies on camouflage and tough armor to provide protection as it rests above the surface. Wandering snails rise from the sand, extend their soft bodies from protective shells, and forage for food. The target of collectors and trinkets for tourists the exquisite shells reveal their true beauty only as living animals. The mantle clings tightly to the shell of the cowrie. Covered in sensitive feelers, it is the animal's detection equipment and is withdrawn into the shell when the cowrie is threatened. It is hard to figure out how the snail manages to fit all that body into such a small space. Even less like a sea snail, the head shield slug carries only a tiny shell on its back. 
It uses a highly developed sense of touch to find worms, its favorite prey. The Black of Night is especially protective for soft-bodied animals no longer able to withdraw into shells. Bright colors revealed in the lights are of most use by day. They act as a warning to leave the resting sea slug alone. Any creature rash enough to ignore the signs may be the target of chemical warfare in the form of a cloud of sulfuric acid. Yet despite the name slug and their noxious nature, these are some of the most elaborately patterned jewels of the night. Darkness and the security it brings transforms an unattractive lump of pinkish-orange jelly into one of nature's most balletic performers. Carrying a feathery fan on its back adds the final touch to the illusion, but there is a far more practical purpose. These are the external gills of the nudibranch. In elegant twists and pirouettes of lacy skirts, the metamorphosis from ugly sea slug to delicate Spanish dancer is complete. But not all soft-bodied creatures are vulnerable prey. Some are active and voracious hunters, none more so than the cuttlefish. Stalking cautiously in the darkness, the predator moves in for the kill. A strike of unerring accuracy. The vivid color change of the cuttlefish communicates the excitement of the hunt and of the kill. The lone cat shark makes an ideal subject for the cameraman. But a cloud of animal plankton soon swarms in, attracted by the strong lights. One of the problems of filming during darkness. Sometimes the swarm is so dense that filming must stop, and the only way to clear the water is to turn off the lights. Countless millions of these minute creatures form the basis for all other animal life in the seas a rich food resource for those brave enough to emerge from daytime hiding. The nocturnal banquet coaxes a porcelain crab from the sanctuary of the anemone's tentacles to gather plankton with net-like mouthparts. Like spacecraft cruising through glittering asteroids, plankton has its own predators these larger animals put themselves at risk in the open water, but darkness and transparency cloak them in invisibility. Only the lights reveal them to the camera. But for some, patience and ambush are the recipe for survival. Appearing from below the sand as night falls, the stargazer settles down to await its prey. Any passing shadow over the upturned face alerts the fish to a potential victim, a victim unlikely to escape the cavernous needle-toothed mouth. Crabs are on the menu for most predators, so they enjoy the cover of darkness, but have to break off whatever they're up to, to beat a hasty retreat into the safety of the sand when an enemy is on the prowl. Even the night shift feels threatened sometimes. A quick shrug, and the disappearing act is complete. A sinuous eel searches for a likely hole, and once found, enters tail first, leaving just the head exposed until the threat has gone. The 
stingray takes no chances as it flaps beneath the surface. The tail, with its formidable spine, remains exposed, ready to whip into action should a larger animal come too close. The bobtailed squid feeds on the larger animals of the plankton, but being small itself becomes a target for hunters. Sensing danger, the squid sinks below the surface, piling gravel onto its sticky skin until it vanishes. Its instinct was correct. A stalking carpet flathead, modified for a low-level approach, skims the seabed in search of prey. Also sensing danger, a crab gets out of the way, and only just in time. A near miss, so the flathead settles itself into the sand. It's just as effective as an ambush predator, blending into the seabed, sharp, wide-angle eyes above the surface, ready to spot passing prey. Immediate danger having passed, the bobtail moves to another hiding place and buries itself again, flicking a sandy coat for total coverage. But still feeling threatened, it resorts to a hasty exit. Because the flathead isn't the only danger lurking in the darkness. Roused from daytime slumbers, when bright colors warn of venomous spines, the lionfish drifts slowly through the night, secure in the knowledge that those same patterns render it almost impossible to see in the blackness. Large eyes help it locate prey. When a victim is spotted, the pectoral fins are spread wide like a fan. This distracts prey and produces a barrier to prevent escape. Some lionfish even drag their fins across the sand to flush out their victims. The dorsal spines, too, often play a part. Their waving motion may act as a lure for fish. The menacing snake-like appearance of moray and conger eels as they writhe through the seabed debris with mouths agape has earned them a vicious reputation. True hunters of the night, Mores are among the most effective of nocturnal predators. A serpentine shape is perfect for prospecting every crevice in the reef or hole in the seabed. Sharp teeth and a vice-like grip means little can escape once detected by the moray's keen sense of smell. Expert at seeking out injured or stressed fish taking refuge among the corals, eels are formidable hunters. The jaw has a huge gape and can swallow sizable fish, and even if prey is too large to swallow, mores can tie themselves in a knot and draw the prey through, ripping off a mouthful at a time. But not all snake-like creatures are voracious predators. Able to stretch its concertina-like body up to two meters, the sea cucumber emerges from the safety of its lair, not to bite prey, but to gather mouthfuls of sand in feather-like tentacles. At night, the seabed is alive with danger. There seems little hope of escape. Yet the clumsy-looking cowfish fears few of the predators. Beneath the toxic skin, its body is protected by a bony, box-like armor. As it hovers above the sand, it is doubly protected. In this alien world, the cover of darkness is only ever swept away by the coming of day or divers' lights. After dark, the anemone becomes an undersea condominium reaching bursting point as both a retreat for the creatures of the day and a safe hunting ground for the seabed nightlife. Boldly patterned clownfish are immune to the anemone's stinging tentacles and by night retreat to rest in the writhing hideaway.
permanent residents of the anemone, shrimp, and porcelain crab emerge from the safety of the tentacles to pluck smaller crustaceans from the soup stream flowing past. With tentacles partially closed for business, the stem of the anemone provides an ideal perch for shrimps to intercept the floating bonanza. With claws held wide and sensitive antennae bristling, each tiny morsel is detected and plucked from the water. Cleaner shrimps' bright colors advertise their services during daylight. At night, this same pattern breaks up their outline and provides protection. The tube anemone rises from the sand to share in the feast. With tentacles extended to trap passing prey, it provides a vantage point for an opportunistic shrimp. No opportunity is lost to get up into the plankton stream and very different creatures will share the same host. Here, a crab and a shrimp jostle for position. Everything that squirms, crawls or creeps gets in on the act. A night out on the seabed always includes dinner. Hermit crabs take no chances. Soft-bodied crabs with no real body armor of their own, they adopt empty shells for added protection, curling their bodies to follow a shell spiral and hold it in place. But even that's not enough. So the hermit plucks anemones from the seabed to decorate its shell and provide a bit more security. The anemones act as a disguise and a stinging tentacled coat. An algal covering is great camouflage. When it's red, the crab is almost impossible to detect unless lit by artificial light. Fragile spider crabs also use a combination of tactics so they too can emerge to take advantage of the flowing plankton broth. As night deepens, the reef itself seems to break into fragments that just get up and walk away. Dressing for the occasion seems to be the province of nocturnal crabs. Decorator crabs use anything they can pull from the seabed and attach to their backs. A covering of sponges, tunicates or even stinging anemones make an ideal camouflage. Dead leaves provide an excellent cover in these shallow waters close to shore, where looking like dead vegetation can mean the difference between life and death. Others just let nature take its course, and the larvae of sponges, tunicates, and algae attach to the crab shells and add to their deceitful disguise. So complete are the camouflaging overcoats they wear, it's difficult to tell where the crab starts and where its living veneer finishes. The algae, tunicates and living sponges continue to thrive on the crabs and may even benefit from being carried from place to place. Carrier crabs too are opportunists and will scavenge any useful defense item from the seabed. Unlike the decorators which plant their shells with camouflage, Carriers hold large objects over their backs, using the last two pairs of legs for the purpose. From above, the fragments of rock, coral or sponge not only hide the animal, but also provide a highly effective shield against attack. Some carriers can go one stage further and will cut choice pieces from living sponges. But not all crabs resort to hiding. 
The swimming crab relies on powerful claws for defense and, as a last resort, will live up to its name. By day, the ultimate predator of Lembe is the frogfish. Most frogfish are content to sit and wait for prey to come to them. But there is always an exception. By night, the hairy frogfish takes its cavernous mouth and lightning reflexes on maneuvers. One of the few frogfish that actively hunts for prey, it crawls along on peculiarly modified fins that look and act like feet. When required, it can put on quite a turn of speed, accelerating across the sand with its bright white lure flicking from side to side. A visual bait for any fish to investigate. The lure also emits a chemical signal. The frogfish makes sure that if its prey doesn't see the lure, at least it will smell it. And once within range, the fastest mouth in the sea opens up. The bright colors of the mantis shrimp are used to their best advantage during daylight. They act as warnings to potential rivals or enemies that a wounding blow from these club-like appendages can cause serious injury or even death. Able to spot danger from all directions by means of independent and incredibly sophisticated eyes, they have little to fear. They even have their own built-in shield for use in combat with others of their kind. The peacock pattern tail curls forward to block the blows of an adversary. Yet even the powerful mantis shrimps sometimes have to retreat to their burrows. But the near-perfect nocturnal super-predator of Lembe is the octopus. Keen-eyed with an awesome intelligence, they are unrivaled as hunters of the night. The eye of the octopus is one of the most advanced among all species, including our own. Caution is one of the greatest survival tactics, and at the first sign of danger, they retreat into their fortresses. The tentacles are perfect for detecting prey as it passes by, snaking out from the hiding place, seeking, probing, touching, feeling, alive to any living thing unfortunate enough to stray within their span. Crabs are the favorite prey of the octopus, but there is a balance in nature and some must always escape. This time, the octopus fails to trap its victim. A shrimp alerted to the danger sinks into the sand, safe for now. But once the telltale movements of a victim have been detected, the eight-legged assassin slithers in for the kill. Enveloped in a net of suckers, the shrimp is dragged back to the octopus's lair, where it will be dismembered by the aggressor's sharp beak. Wrapped in a protective shroud of outward-facing suckers, eyes reduced to wide-viewing horizontal slits, it waits patiently. The telltale pulses of its siphon, the supply pump of fresh oxygen-bearing water. Alert and wide-eyed, the octopus detects movement and peers into the gloom. Not food this time, perhaps an enemy, so time to disappear. Spotting trouble or prey is crucial to survival for the wonderpus. Rising on its legs to increase its range has great advantages for a species that spends much of its life flattened against a seabed. Tentacles spread over the sand in search of prey. Like writhing snakes, they penetrate every hole, every crevice, always on the move. 
Their combined action results in a search area out of all proportion to the size of its body. A body which in the event of a threat can squeeze into the tiniest of openings. In this alien environment, it is us that are the intruders. We can only ever hope to gain a glimpse of the strange denizens that populate the mysterious world of the nocturnal seabed. A world where you can never tell what will next pass through the beams of your lights.